Good afternoon. I've been hearing, I've been hearing some great things. Uh, the, our teams are off to a good start. Uh, the, even some, there's even some conflict being ignited in some of, our, some of the rooms, so that's, that's music to my ears. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce the leader whose vision of a better, safer, and stronger Baltimore has inspired Outcome Stat and this gathering today. Our mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So, the good thing about speaking after lunch is you don't have to worry about standing between everyone and food which I've been and it's not an enviable position. The bad thing about speaking right after lunch is depending on how good it is, one or two of you might start checking out. So hopefully I will, and I don't mean like running out of here, I'm just mean, you know, enjoying the meal and all of that good stuff. So I, I wanna thank you all for, for being here. I want to uh, welcome you all, even though, you know, this is halfway through the day. So I'll say to, you know, to welcome again, to the welcome to the second part of the day for, uh, our 2015 Outcome Stat Conference. Who ever thought that you would be energetically participating in a budget conference? Nobody, right? Well, Andrew. Oh, you, you told them it wasn't a budget conference? Oh, that's how you got them here. Oh. Good job, good job. Well, with your help today and tomorrow, we're launching Outcome Stat to deliver on a promise of holding ourselves and each other accountable for improving the lives of Baltimore's residents. And I hope, even in these just this half of half of day, you see the challenges that we have at city in city government with addressing these issues. We know that there are issues in our city and in our country, overarching, entrenched problems that impact our ability not just to deliver the services to uh, our communities, but for those services to do their intended uh, purpose. Things like poverty, things like health disparities, things like economic disparity, things like a poorly prepared uh, workforce in some instances, all of those things matter. The challenge is, as people who care about all of those things, how do you marry up your concerns about dealing with these deep, overarching, entrenched issues with the responsibility we have as government to deliver services on a day-to-day on a -day basis and to try, you know, in, in doing it, uh, to push the city forward? So I hope, and I, I guess I've heard, uh, from some of the sessions, you're, you are bumping up against uh, that, I won't say frustration, what should I call it? That the reality of uh, trying, to, uh, trying to, to move uh, a city forward in challenging times. Did that kind of hit where you, some of you have been this morning? Uh, one or two? Yeah. Now you're, I was about to say y'all are quiet now. I heard all, uh, all about it before. So I will say outcome stat aligns pr uh, program management, resource allocation, strategic planning to help us achieve measurable results for our residents all across our priority outcomes. This process will help us to prioritize our investments and ensure that taxpayers' dollars have the most meaningful impact. Again, with the understanding that we, if, if we are going to make real change in our city, we have to operate on uh, sometimes dual planes. Yes, we have to focus on the day-to-day -day, uh, service delivery, but there also has to be a space, and we don't know where that space is yet, for us to use these same resources or to use the resources in a way that move the needle on some of these systemic issues at the same time. How do we get there? I would say that still, you know, this is a, a work in progress. That's where you come in, you know, to, to, to challenge us and to give us feedback on how we get to, the, to, get to that place where we're both um, making sure that we have workforce training, but also making sure the workforce is prepared to come you know, to the training. So we, we have a lot of uh, issues that, um, that we are dealing with with this uh, program or initiative that is being developed as, we, um, you know, as, as you are working through today and tomorrow. So um, this, as I said, that we're trying to get the most meaningful impact out of taxpayers' dollars. If 
a strategy is working, we want to be able to, to assess whether it's uh, success merits additional resources, additional investment. If it's not delivering the results, we'll use outcome stat to make a determination whether fund funding is held back or if an alternative approach should be explored. Today's conference and the efforts uh, moving forward to plan for the future represents an extension of our recent efforts to align our annual budget decisions with our priorities, uh, the prior priorities that we've set for the city, which you know seems pretty much like common sense, particularly for those of you in business, but it's not the way cities have operated. The indicators that we have chosen represent some of our greatest challenges, unemployment, crime, cleanliness, blight elimination, drug-related deaths, recreational opportunities, and education. In many cases, we have made considerable progress in recent years. With the help of the state, we're investing more than a billion dollars in new schools and renovated schools throughout the city. This summer, we created placements for 8,000 young people through YouthWorks and Higher One Youth. And over the last five years, Baltimore's unemployment rate has declined by more than a third, and we've added more than 12,000 jobs across the city. Our Be More for Healthy Babies initiative has, has driven down our infant mortality rate by 50% since 2009. And since 2010, several new initiatives have increased recycling in Baltimore from 15 to 20%, even though if our sustainability folks are in here, they'll tell you that's still not enough, I'm sure, right? Anybody in here from sustainability? <laughs> Uh, the annual numbers of uh, visitors to our city has grown by more than 3 million visitors. Our investments in early childhood programming have increased the percentage of our children that are ready to enter kindergarten to 76%. And our world-renowned Vegas to Value program is helping to reduce the number of vacant properties in the city despite the lingering effects of the Great Recession. We have a lot to be proud of. It's been a lot of success. But when you look, when you listen to those numbers and you, and you with a full understanding, as I know you do, of the, the immense challenges that we still have to face in our city, you understand the, the, the importance of why you're here. You understand the importance of the work of those of us who love this city and, and for those of us in government who feel honored and privileged to serve the people of the city, we understand the complexity and the, um, the not just the complexity, but the, the urgency of getting this right, even in these difficult situations. I believe that the improvements the, that we've made are critical to achieving our goal of growing uh, our city by 10,000 families, but I also think it's critical to bring up increased quality of life to those families that we have here. We must make Baltimore more attractive for people who are looking to, to uh, move here. And we have to give those families who are here more reasons to stay. So we all know that there's more work to do, more challenges to overcome, and that's why we're here today. With Outcome Stat, we're bringing together our, our city's thinkers and doers to build a better, safer, and stronger Baltimore because I know that city government can't do it alone. I want to repeat that. We are bringing together Baltimore's thinkers and Baltimore's doers because I know that we cannot do it alone. And what that means is as thinkers and doers, yes, I ask for your participation, but also if there needs to be pushback, give it. Otherwise, you just came for a nice lunch, and I know it was nice because I saw it. <laughs> But we, you know, it, it, it is only as meaningful as we make this process. And you know, the thing that I've always said about the government, and, and we've differed, well, I shouldn't say differed. We have had robust conversations about how we, <laughs> we get there. But the, the, the sense is we're not mind readers at any level. And the only way that we get a sense of whether or not we're hitting our goal is to be in conversation with the, the people that we serve. The only way that we're, we know that we're going to get this right is that you are bold enough to have these conversations here and now. If you leave here and you have, said, and you have not said something that you believe needs to be said to make this process better and to make our city better, I'm letting you know right now that is your fault. 
and when you go out and you complain about it, you should have that in the back of your mind that that's your problem, that you created because we had an opportunity to sit here and to be bigger and we decided to complain. This isn't perfect. This is a process that we're trying to put together to get to better. This no. conversation, who's ever been to a conversation like this on this scale about how we align the resources for the government? It's never, I've been in, it'll be December, it'll be 20 years, never happened. So we have to use this opportunity to force ourselves collectively to be better and to get to those challenges, get to the root of these challenges and to also try to do just what we said, align the resources of our city to do better uh, for the people that we serve. So we know that, Bal that the city government can't do it alone. Your work with the philanthropic communities, our anchor institutions, the private sectors, and our community leaders, all of those things are vital to the future of our city. And I know that with your participation, your active, robust community, your uh, participation, this work will continue the strong partnerships that have led us to those successful statistics that I talked about. I'm excited to announce the launch of the Outcome Stat website that you're going to hopefully see if we can uh, get the, uh, the internets to start working down here. Um, it's beautiful being out here in the woods, but I don't know. <laughs> I love it. I love it, but you know, I don't. I I feel like you know when you go in the bathroom and there's it, the the toilets are a hole in the ground. You feel like you know the internet is probably like somebody holding some wires together. <laughs> So anyway, I'm excited about the, the uh, outcome stat website, or, or like twigs, you know, they're trying to con conduct the, the, with, uh, with, 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 with recyclable fibers. Um, so anyway, through this new tool, uh, we will transparently communicate with residents the progress that we've made on each of these indicators and allow our neighbors to engage with us in an ongoing dialogue, which is very important. I, and I hope that you hear me when I say this is about an ongoing dialogue to get this right. This is not about perfection, because I think, you know, as, as great as we know An Andrew is, we, we don't think that he's perfect or anybody that is in city government is perfect. This is about making progress in <coughs> meaningful ways and setting up a pathway for that progress. And we have to do it through communication and through getting feedback. So this is an <coughs> ongoing dialogue, multi-way dialogue about how we turn the curve. This website will allow you users to share their feedback with us, and we want to hear from everyone, whether you're in this room today or whether you're a citizen at home. I know that you have a voice in this process, and we want to hear how you, uh, we want to think how you think we're, as a community, can best address the key indicators. Again, we want to know how you feel that as a community, we can address these key indicators. We will incorporate your feedback as the outcome st uh, stat process continues and grows. Again, I want to thank you all for, for being here. I want to encourage you to have the conversations that you feel will be meaningful in, to help in, in helping us achieve these goals as a city. Uh, nobody promised you it would be easy. We did promise you lunch and you've eaten. So now we have to get back to the, to the real work. Um, in a moment, I'm going to turn it back over to Andrew Klein to provide a uh, sneak preview of the Outcome Stat uh, website. But first, I want to give a huge thank you for all of our partners, for, uh, for to, to all of you, really, for being here today. I want to thank not just those of you who, are, who have participated, but also our sponsors that helped uh, to make this possible. When you take a look at the sponsors, it gives me a sense that this is something that's important, not just to city government, but to our community as a whole. When I take a look at this, ro this room, it's, it is also a reflection of that, so I'm very grateful. I want to thank Andrew Klein, Emma uh, Tezier, I'm messing up your name, I'm just going to say Emma, uh, Kirsten, Heather, you know who you are. Um, thank you. I know Heather. There you are. And you have a very reasonable last name, Hudson. <laughs> so I want to thank you all uh, for, for, for doing this, this tough work. You know, this is, this is where the rubber meets the road in, in real ways. Uh, you know, the budget is the, the, kind of, the, the kind of stuff that most people you know, don't want to spend time you know, thinking about. It's not the sexiest problems that people, uh, you know, that 
you, you, you think about, but it impacts, the decisions that we make in our, in our budget impacts today and the future of our city. So I wanna thank you all for all of the hard work, the research and um, everything that has been done to get us to where we are today. Thank you for leading this effort. And I wanna thank all of my cabinet members who have all said that they would prefer to be someplace else. Uh, I appreciate if you didn't say it, you thought it. I see those eyes going up. Um, but you know, this is important stuff, and we've come a long way. And 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 uh, Klein can attest. We have cities that that are coming to Baltimore to take a look at our um, outcome-based budgeting because, as I said, it's not the way uh, city governments normally work. They're taking. They want to see what we're able to do with outcome, really outcome staff, really aligning those priorities and and judging ourselves against how we're able to deliver uh, on these promises. So I think that uh, we should all be proud of that and understand that because people are looking, we have a chance to make a real difference, uh, not just in Baltimore, but across this country. Uh, people are looking at Baltimore in this very difficult time to see how we respond, and the work that we're doing here is part of that response. So I wanna thank you very much. I'm looking forward to hearing your recommendations, not just from this process, but on an, on, you know, as we move uh, forward with the feedback that we're gonna get from, uh, from the website. Again, I know you could be any place else, uh, and, and the fact that you're here means a lot uh, to me personally and as mayor, so thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is the Outcome Stat website. You're getting a sneak preview. Um, We're going to launch this to the public soon, uh, as, as the mayor said. Uh, it's very important that the Outcome Stat conversation be open to all, and, and this is how we're, we're gonna make that happen. Um, Heather Hudson from the Mayor's Office of Information Technology is driving. Um, she's over there. She worked with Socrata uh, to build this website. Um, and as you'll see, we're trying to be simple, but also substantive. Uh, we wanna share with everyone, uh, not only what are the indicators and where's the trend, but what's going on behind the trend. Just as, as Phil talked about the story behind the curve, that's what you're all talking, you were all talking about this morning. Um, so we have, uh, we have icons for each of the priority outcomes, better schools, safer streets, stronger neighborhoods, growing economy, and then, I don't know if you can scroll, there we go. Innovative government, cleaner city, healthier city. And then that last icon is, is a link to open budget. Uh, the site will also have a link to open Baltimore, which is where um, that's a repository for all kinds of city data. Um, and that data is gonna help us in a lot of ways to tackle these challenges. For behind each of the priority outcomes, um, you will get icons for each of the indicators under that <coughs> priority outcome. So school readiness is one of the four indicators under better schools. And once you click on that, it'll bring up the, the chart showing the historical data for school readiness. And school readiness has improved dramatically um, over the past 10 years in Baltimore City, uh, but it did plateau um, this past year, that, that there are changes afoot in the way that, that this is measured, uh, but based on the, the, the way it's being measured now, uh, we do see kind of a plateau, so there's much work to do to, to push that from 76% of our children ready for kindergarten. Um, you know, we want, we want to get that obviously much higher. And underneath the, the chart, we have included a summary of the story behind the curve. So the, the positive factors contributing to the trend, also the negative factors, the, the headwinds that we're up against in, in improving um, where, that, where that curve is and, and pushing it in the right direction. And what we're gonna do over time is we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, making that information more robust. So you're gonna be giving us um, a lot of feedback in terms of what works, uh, what strategies we should be pursuing, what level of performance we should be targeting five years from now. Uh, and, and we wanna be adding that information to this site 
We want to be uh, adding charts about contributing indicators. So if we know that um, you know, school attendance is a key factor, um, we want to include information about school attendance. So, all right. Slowly but surely. Oh, is that, is that? <laughs> Kirsten found the spot over in the corner. So this is just some description about the priority outcome. And here you see those are the indicators, as I said. So what we plan to do, um, we're going to be building these plans, a turn the curve plan for each indicator. That will inform our, our budget decisions. And we're going to use our stat process to track our progress. So you can expect to see you know, in the spring, um, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through our budget process this year uh, with your help. We're going to be calling on you to help us in the budget process. Um, once we have a budget, we're moving forward um, on these plans. And, and these are plans that all of us are owning, uh, as we talked about this morning. So we want you at, at these stat sessions. So we'll have a stat session about each of these outcomes a couple times a year. Uh, you will be there. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, open them to the public. We'll stream them online. Uh, we want everyone to see what's happening in terms of making progress toward these goals that we're setting. Um, but it starts with this conference and with the website that will give us a portal um, for, for people to see how we're doing, to give us feedback, just like you're doing today. Um, do you agree or disagree with this analysis of uh, what's going on with this particular indicator? And what do you think we could do to move it in a better direction? That's probably as good as we're going to do yeah. with, with, with the website. Um, so you know, look for this coming soon. Um, and we have, we have a few more minutes. Um, for, you can socialize, uh, but, but we're, <laughs> you'll be, all the teams will be going back to the meeting rooms that they were in this morning with one exception. Uh, the Healthier City team is going to be meeting upstairs in this building. Um, I know that having the two teams in the same room was, was um, difficult, so we've set up, we've set up uh, a meeting space for the Healthier City team right up the stairs. Uh, and with that, thank you and hope you oh, have, oh. What time we start? What time we start? What time we start? We're gonna, we can make it 115 to start. Yeah, we can end earlier. Yeah, we're gonna start because we started lunch earlier, we're gonna start the next sessions at 115. So I just want before we break up, I just want to say this. And I was trying to, to, to speak to it earlier, and I just want to be sure that I'm clear. The the budget process is just that. A budget process to affect how the city will use its limited resources. I know that there are a lot of conversations about problems outside <coughs> of the, the uh, issues that we're, we have talked about. So let's say we're talking about uh, trash. And is that up? We have that on there, right? Recycling. recycling. The reason, you know, people need to, you know, we want to increase the uh, amount of recycling or, or we want to reduce the amount of illegal dumping. There's a whole bunch of social issues involved in that. Um, because you can't forget that just like anything else we have a history of in Baltimore, just like we save spots with lawn chairs, um, you know, in some, in some communities, you know, the, 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 the place where you throw out the trash is not in front of your house. It's down the corner next to the, the corner store because, you know, because, you know, that's where you did it when you were little and, you, you know, that's where you continue to do it. And, and we understand that there, there are issues around trying to change those behaviors, and that's just part of it. You know, in some communities, 
where uh, you have people who have not been homeowners or even home renters, the, the issue of uh, dumping isn't even viewed as dumping. So I've been to communities when, when I do my crime and grind wa walks and been with neighbors who, who have been frustrated by the fact that they're out there you know, uh, going through weeds and dirt and you know, tires and all of this stuff to clean away debris from behind their homes and they've watched their neighbors go out the next day and throw more crap out there. Like that's, you know, those are social issues that our budget isn't gonna address. So what I'm trying to say in, the, in, in, in that, trying to use that example to say that we know that there are issues outside of what the, you know, the, the DPW is responsible as, for as far as trash collection. We might not solve all of those. Doesn't mean that we can't have a conversation about it and figure out how, if at all, our budget process or the things that we do in government can get to some of those overarching issues. So the, the challenge is for those of us who care about you know, how we are delivering the services day to day to make sure that we're getting the most, you know, we're operating the most effective and efficient government is to find that balance because we can't be, a, you know, this can't be about the issue of solving, uh, you know, to say an issue, poverty. You know, because we're not going to solve that in the 2016, 2017 budget. But we can have an impact in it. So it's trying to find that intersection in meaningful ways that will be the challenge of this group and this work moving forward. Because we can't ignore these entrenched problems, but we cannot be consumed with them either because then we won't, uh, we won't make a difference in, the, in creating the effective and efficient government that we want to see. So I want you to understand that I know that there, there's a, it's difficult and there's conflict around how do we achieve, you know, make progress on both. Um, but like I said to you before, we didn't say this was going to be easy. So thank you in advance, and we'll get the, the lunch. Uh, yeah, yes, Val, we got you on DPW and solid waste. Yes. <laughs> um, again, thank you very much.